Today we're talking the biggest hip-hop savage CEOs, and there's no bigger savages than Diddy and Birdman. This is Jordan Tower with JT News and MREC with MREC TV. Hit that bell, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, and the like button. Don't be cheap with the like button. It's free on both of our channels. MREC, what's good? Salute, JT. I'm so, so good. How are you? I'm great, bro. So we're talking savages today. Diddy and Ugh. Birdman. Now, what makes them savages? Well, first mm-hmm. off, they work harder than pretty much everybody, especially to build their company Facts. from the ground up. Facts. But there's another thing that makes them a super savage. Talk to them. Not paying everybody that works for them and that works <clears> hard for them. They keep the money for themselves. They put. They sign people knowingly signing them to savage deals. Ugh. And this is the part reckon I hate about the music industry because raping you records. They rape, sign rape, it to raping you records. Absolutely. If you heard Lox's second album, they were making fun of Diddy on that record when they called it raping you records. And J Hood was in the skit too. J Hood was in the skit. So shout shout out to J Hood. Yeah, shout out to Jay Hood. So let's first go through the first savage. We'll break down mm-hmm. Birdman. No, we can't forget Birdman. It's a it's a it's a conglomerate. It's his brothers and him. They run mm-hmm. cash money. Slim. And first of all, salute to them for building such a brand of cash money. And they took so, their yeah. whole city with them in the beginning, for sure. Facts. They, they so, made a lot of people cash they money. They built the empire. They made a lot of people millionaires, but they did, mm-hmm. they didn't pay them every dollar that they were owed. But that's another story. We're going to get into this right now. So it all mm-hmm. started with the rapper, the early years of Cash Money, before they had their deal with Universal, their 85-15 split or 80-20 split, whatever their split is. They had mm-hmm. a rapper by the name of Little Slim, and this is the guy who introduced Lil Wayne to Birdman. But he left the label after releasing his 1995 project, Thuggin' and Pluggin', because he wasn't receiving his fair share of album sales. Within a couple of years, the entire first generation of cash money uh, deserted the label, citing reasons similar to this. Mm. But a new era was ushered in with the Hot Boys, okay? Juvenile, BG, Lil Wayne, Turk. Mm. These are the guys who really, you know, put it on the map. Uh, Wendy Day. They, they they put the bricks in the building. Absolutely. Pretty much. Now Wendy Day was the first person to get screwed in this because she brought cash money to Universal. She notif- noticed uh, Baby was doing his thing, be- mm-hmm. making millions independently uh, down south, and she made that. Uh, Thing happened with Universal, okay, and she was supposed to get a five percent finder's fee. Um, and she got them the major distribution with, with, with Universal. Yes. She broke it at. Now it wasn't even a five percent finder's fee. I think it was a certain amount of money, okay. Mm. And when she attempted to collect the the finder's fee or whatever it was, we have the story on our channel somewhere. Uh, she said. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. Birdman told her this: "Sue me when I have to pay you, and you'll get paid." Mm. Savage. Savage. Eventually, he did pay her, but it took her lots of court fees. So it's crazy. Mm. Um, then juvenile, and he lives by this model to this day. Oh, absolutely! You see it happening with Little Wayne. Now you mm-hmm. got Juvenile, the net, the the first breakout star, national, international star, Juvenile, two thousand one, mm-hmm. released project in English, and then he left Cash Money. Same reason most artists leave when they refused his four million dollar out of court settlement. He lawyered up, ended up taking home eleven million. Did they pay it out? Who knows? Who knows? <sighs> But, uh, oh, no, I, maybe he did because he did return to cash money again in 2003. He did Juvie the Great, hit slow, he did, and he had slow motion. But then he left again. I remember he left again. Then he came mm-hmm. back recently. <laughs> I don't Crazy. know. But, you know, that is his home base. And uh, Baby did make him, a, make him a multimillionaire. Made him a superstar. Absolutely. 
Uh, next up, we got BG, one of the... Pff, uh, he was a great... Yeah, I, I liked BG. There was something about BG I liked to mm-hmm. you know? Uh, he signed with Cash Money in 1992 at 12 years old. But he was their go-to guy before Juvenile. Juvenile just became the biggest star. Oh, yeah, he was the so local BG star. BG was putting out... I think he put out like 10 albums... Yeah, no, nah, he was the he was the first star, Back but then in. he went to jail. Yeah, so then you know, juvenile had to carry that torch, but uh, he claims he never received royalty checks for albums released before 1998. He said they screwed me over. He said in 2002 he left the label soon after juvenile, uh, and uh, he started a new label called Chopper City Records on E1. Then Turk yeah, Turk that. sued Cash Money for 1.3 million in 2015, shady accounting. But then he sh- uh, he settled out of court. So salute to Turk. He got his money and he's now salute cool to the homie Turk again. Getting that bread. Absolutely. And Little Wayne's the big bird, one. Man. Little Wayne's probably the most shocking one. Uh, we you know you got Manny Fresh too. Uh, he's mm-hmm. a producer. And he left in 2005, took Birdman to court for financial mis- mismanagement. I left Cash Money because of money. <laughs> so, <laughs> <sighs> man, Little Wayne, $51 million accused. First of all, he didn't get his $10 million advance for Carter Five. Uh, the, the, this, this lawsuit seems like it's dragging on for a long time, right, Rec? It, it's... It's dragging out something crazy. Like, I don't think Lil Wayne ever is going to get that money. I don't think so either. I mean, maybe like years from now. Luckily, Lil Wayne has a lot of money, so he can wait it out. But uh, some mm. people aren't, you don't have that, you know, luxury. You know, there's also yeah. a couple producers like Players and Skills, Jim Johnson and Diesel and Bangladesh. They all had their own, you know, Five hundred thousand here, million mm-hmm. here, you know. So, I don't know. <clears throat> Next savage we have is Diddy. Now he's a more low key oh, oh. savage, and I think he handles most of his lawsuits uh, on the DL. He doesn't really mm-hmm. get exposed publicly that much. The only people that really, really exposed him was the locks. Uh, right. Facts. Now. First, refrigerators was going to get thrown on Diddy head, yeah. according to Jada Kiss. First, let's get Rex uh, perspective because he's a Brooklyn native on uh, mm-hmm. Notorious B.I.G. How did Notorious B.I.G. hypothetically get screwed? Um, first and foremost, Diddy bought Biggie Publishing, I think, for 50K, mm-hmm. right? And then when Big sold some records, got some show money. He tried to buy it back from Puff. Puff tried to charge him anywhere between two mil and three mil. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't even know if Big bought his publishing back. Because mm. a short time after that, you know, he passed away. He got he got murdered in, in L.A. Damn. And then, you know, Big had the label with on Diaz, too. So all this was going on. He was trying to get his business right. And he put out Junior Mafia on Undias slash Atlantic Records, shouts to Un Unre- uh, Rivera, mm-hmm. and he put out Cameron and Charlie Baltimore. Wow! But Big wasn't alive, so but Big was one of the first Brooklyn artists that was signed to Puff that got raped for his publishing. I don't know what his deal was, but definitely got raped on the publishing. Mm. Then. We got Craig Mack. I don't remember him having money woes, but he probably did because he mm-hmm. just stopped recording at one point. And it was probably because of money. Facts. Then you got Faith Evans. I never heard of her complaining. Uh, did she? Um, not that I know, know of, but she did lead the label. Yeah. And it probably was for, for that reason. Yeah, she's that same just more reason. quiet. But I think Diddy probably has these people sign contracts about publicly defamation, you know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, then you after got... what happened with the locks. Oh, he sued him? You know? Nah, I mean, that situation, he probably didn't want that to happen with other artists. That's true. You're right. So he probably put a gag order in for everybody else. Now, the locks' biggest problem was 
he had their publishing. Even when they got free and went over yeah. to Rough Riders, he kept their publishing. Facts. And we all remember this infamous interview. We let y'all go. We keep it moving. But to get on there and portray like somebody got to go and steal and rob and be shiest and y'all, that ain't really correct. You know what I'm saying? And first of all, I'm at my office right now. I'm always accessible. Y'all ain't got to get on the radio and, 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 and do certain tactics and do certain things to ever holler at me. J.D. Kiss, last time I, spoke, I saw you, I told you, let's get together, let's talk. You know what I'm saying? I told you I'm accessible. I said, if anything don't come, if, 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 if there's somebody standing away for you expressing yourself, if any of y'all expressing yourself, y'all can come get at me directly. You know what I'm saying? Come All that's going in the refrigerator, you're going to kill them. Yeah. ain't killing nobody, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, we businessmen. <laughs> We all mature adults here. All that right there. I'm at my office. Y'all can sit on this interview with her and talk as long as y'all want to talk about it. Or you can take the invitation I gave you before. But it's not even getting there because of your, your, your get on the radio, whatever tactics. I ain't your enemy. Dog, we just, I ain't your enemy. Just, you just, need to bang like that. Dog, dog. That's coming yo, at you. I ain't your enemy. Just yesterday, we got a, just yesterday we got a note from your office about killing you. saying you don't have no idea of none of this or none of nothing. Just yesterday, just yesterday, told us that. I yeah, see you at the home, at the show backstage. You said, I find out what it was. The, me, but, but don't, don't sit here and portray like Puff took nothing from y'all. What is, what is it? What is it? What are you calling? If it's what are you calling? Years, it, it, what are you calling? Frame. I mean, that was uh, that was an infamous. It, it, it was classic, though. Oh, it was uh, it was the talk of the city. <laughs> Diddy Facts. was Diddy was officially the talk of the city that day. Been the talk of the city, but officially that day. Did he run the city, huh? Hey, that's what they say. Then uh, we got. Uh, I don't see Red Cafe dropping anymore. I haven't seen him. Uh, what about Los? So he he never. I don't even think he dropped the album on Bad Boy. I don't think he did, but he, you know he was definitely had a, he maybe def- a few singles and ran away. He ran around with Puff in the videos, dancing some videos and he shit. Was doing, he was no. doing a thing. Uh, Los, I know. Well, you know what? Shouts to Red Cafe and all Lo- that. Shouts to Red Cafe. You know what's? You know what's weird? Los never came out either. Yeah, King Los. But he he be doing shit Lose. still. I mean, he's with uh, Lola Monroe, right? Like they're still together. They got a baby. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Lola Monroe, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's a rapper too. I met her too. What about Carl Thomas, man? Uh, he had two. He put out, I think records. what one, one or two albums. Two albums disappeared. The first album was emotional or something yeah. like that. Uh, Black oh. Rob, one or two. Black albums Rob, gone. he put out two albums on B- Bad Boy. Mace, two, three albums. I mean, he 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 left himself. I mean, let's get. Yeah, he that. left, came back, became a pastor. Yeah. Mario yeah. Winans, one or two albums gone. Loon, one or two albums gone. G Dep, one or two albums gone. Yeah. Shine. And, and it's funny the people you naming, they all got locked up. Loom, Shine, mm. Black Raw. Word. Then G Depp. Look at New Edition was on there. You got Ape on MJG. I think they did a one off though. I'm gonna be honest. They, yeah. were too, they were too much veterans to you know. Now they was vets when they signed. I, yeah. That was a dope album too. It was a lot of good records that came off that, that was a good album. Now Diddy does produce the shit out of your record. I'll give oh yeah, that. let's not get it twisted. <laughs> Birdman and Diddy are two two of the best marketing geniuses in the game. Absolutely. They get they're gonna make you a superstar. Absolutely. But the price for that fame. <laughs> you gotta sign your you can blood on that. You gotta sign your soul. <laughs> It's on that cool. dotted line, Yo, like it's, literally, it's almost like take selling your soul your... out your chest. Words, <laughs> put it Yo. on that paper and blood. <laughs> Yo, I didn't know Fox, did. Foxy Brown was on Bad Boy too. Nah, no, no, that's a that's never. a misprint. That's a misprint because I I don't remember her ever being on Bad Boy. Never. Yeah, that's definitely a misprint. That's got to be a misprint. Uh, but you know, G. Depp, he's in jail. Uh, let's see. I see. There's a lot of people that never just came out, but that's not his fault. I don't mm-hmm. think. Remember, uh, Cherry Dennis. Yeah, she had a nice Danity little smoke. Danity Kane. Record. Remember Danity Kane? Yeah. Day twenty six. They're quick. All most of his artists are out of here after two albums. One twelve. They did a few albums. They they had they had money woes too. With the I public. think so. Yeah. I, they never 
voiced out publicly yes, about it. Yes, they did on the Breakfast Club recently. Oh, they did recently. Recently, recently. they talked. About oh, it. see, I didn't see that interview. I'm out the loop. I gotta get in the loop of that. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, yeah, man. So these are the these guys are savages because they're savages with creativity, marketing, but they're also and they're savages of making something out of nothing. But they're also savages where you're gonna pay if you want to be down with the team. You're gonna pay with your soul. Yeah, French Montana's on there too, but I think he has he has a weird deal. Yeah, it's like a multi deal. I See, French, he don't mind paying for a soul because he wants the fame anyway. You know what I mean? He gonna get to the money. See, French, he's a hustler. He know how to get to the money. But French, he's okay with. He'll you know, take a loss on one thing and take a huge win on another thing. He's okay with those Diddy type deals. Yeah, he'll he'll balance it out. Yeah, he's a hustler. He know how to get to it. Shout out to French. You know what I mean? Shout out to French. You got to give him that. Yeah. Um, but anyways, these are these are uh, hip hop's biggest savage CEOs. Anything else to add, Rec? No, not at all. I mean, you know, you got you had a uh, Diddy made a lot of people rich. Uh, so did Birdman. I'm curious to see if mm-hmm. Drake's gonna have problems. He should be done with his uh, his deal at this point, you know. I think Drake is another one what? who is comfortable with, you know what? I always wanted to be famous. Yeah, I got to the money, and you know what? It is what it is. He's you a know, my too. contract is over. Yeah, I'm gonna just do my deal somewhere else. You know, OVO. I keep hearing about OVO records. What the f- you know? Man, what what artists they put out? What Drake project? Is under OVO a, Records. A, a lot, bro. Party next. Really? Door. Oh, is it a logo deal or is it no. like let's be real? Oh, it's probably a logo deal. <laughs> well, then that don't count. <laughs> but he's, he's still got a deal with Warner. Yeah, but you know, let's be real. Like, is he really? Dist- you know, uh, Drake is not the Birdman of his label, at least not yet. No. You know what I'm saying? It's a logo deal. It's two different things. Yeah, but he put out a few artists. Yeah, no, nah, shout out to Drake. I, he looks like a dude that want to see other people win. And I, he put a lot of people on, too. You know, he helped a lot of people, jumped on a lot of people's records. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Drake seems like a, a genuine dude that want to see people win. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Oh, you know, oh, Oliver's the one that's kind of like behind all that kind of stuff and 40, you know? Oh, okay. Called Shout Oli- out to them, Oliver and Forty. Yeah, the artists they got is Par- Party Next Door, Majid Jordan, O'Brien, uh, Roy Woods, DVSN. DVSN's big, bro. Uh, I love McConan, Plaka Not Nice, and Plaza. Yeah. Anyways, guys, we'll check you guys on the next loop. We appreciate you guys tuning in to us. Hit that bell, hit that subscribe button, and if you want to run ads on the channel. It's Jordan Tower Media at G... I mean, sorry. Whoa. It's spooky over here. Very. Uh, hit that bell. Hit that subscribe button on both of our channels. We'll appreciate you guys. And we'll check you on the next one. Peace. Peace.